Hey, do you like RPGs? Well, if you do, you're definitely in the right place. Today, we've got a roundup of 20 or so new RPGs releasing in 2024 and some beyond. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about here, so let's get started off with number 20. The first Berserker, Kazan, is one that made a big splash a couple of months back with its reveal trailer because it just looks like an awesome, badass action RPG. It is very much a Souls-like. You could tell right away from the gameplay it has that challenge, that emphasis on parrying, probably that brutal difficulty. We don't know exactly how you build out your character yet, but can I just say, the main character looks really badass. He just looks like a video game dude. Just a video game protagonist if I've ever seen one. And sometimes you gotta love that. According to developers' descriptions, you're like this powerful, badass leader who has fallen from grace and returned from death and is out for revenge to reclaim his skills and honor and glory. I expect the story to be pretty simple and slight, but what we do get is some incredible visuals, really good anime-inspired stuff, uh, and some over-the-top boss battles. If you're into this like offshoot of RPGs, the Souls-like type thing, what more can you ask for here? As of right now, it doesn't have a release date, but it's just slated as coming soon. Next over at number 19, we have Nightingale. This is a PC survival RPG uh, set with this weird neo-Victorian fantasy style, and it's significant because it's a new studio from a bunch of ex-Bioware developers. So that comes with a lot of good RPG pedigree behind it, but Nightingale looks like something a little bit different. While yes, it is definitely on the survival RPG sense of things, the visual style, the look of the characters and creatures and how you traverse this world just seems to feel a little bit different. You're like this realm walker, so you have the ability to like traverse different worlds. And you're gonna be hunting, fighting, doing PvE stuff, doing survival stuff, crafting, uh, building your own settlements. And I'm really curious to see what else makes this game stand out, because the visual style has me hooked, but we gotta see what else it really has. People have been getting their hands on it a little bit with like betas and alphas and stuff, but it is officially releasing in early access in February, so we'll be able to check it out more. Next over at number 18, we have Chrono Odyssey. This one looks incredibly ambitious and uh, it's slated for 2024, but we haven't seen too much of it. But we got a trailer about like eight or nine months ago that looked absolutely stunning visually. And all we know is that it is this open world MMORPG. It looks like you can play with other peoples. It looks a little bit hack and slashy, like a little bit more action focused, but we've seen players explore giant worlds together and alone, engage in big boss battles that almost kind of look like raids. But like I said, the jury's still out. We're gonna have to wait and see whether or not it's just like a really flashy trailer that over promises because we don't know too much about the developer and the publisher here. There's not too much else behind them. But like I said, it is slated for 2024, so maybe we'll get some more answers soon. Next over at number 17, we have the Gothic 1 Remake. This is a big one, folks, especially for some of those old sweaty PC RPG nerds. And I mean that with respect, damn it. Uh, Gothic was revolutionary for the time. There is still not really anything like it out there to this day. And the remake has been in the works for quite some time. It is not this massive, huge project with millions of people working on it, but it does look like it's faithful, and that's the most important thing. We're excited to see like maybe now a whole new generation of players will be exposed to this because it's releasing on PC and the new consoles, so there's that, and as of right now, it is slated for 2024. Next over at number 16, we have Phantom Blade Zero. This is that PC, PS5 action hack and slash RPG that just has some incredibly stunning visuals. I don't know how much RPG elements this is going to have, but it is being billed as one by many people. And regardless, it does just look like a cool bit of fun. You're this elite assassin in this mysterious world, and it kind of looks like a really good mix between something like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima, Tenshu with some sneakiness, and it is running in Unreal Engine 5, and it, like I said at the start, it does look really impressive. As of right now, it has no release date, but we're really hoping we see it this year. Next over at number 15, we have Doke V. This is that weird open world kind of Pokemon-esque adventure where you're all these like weird, surreal looking goofy kids running around this beautiful magical world, engaging in combat, engaging in like life sim activities. It just seems like a unique blend of genres and people were hooked right from the start with the first trailer, but the game has gone dark 
for a while, but we have gotten confirmation that it is still very much in the works. The developer is also working on Black Desert Online and the spinoff game to that. Uh, Crimson Desert, which has also been delayed, that looks like that's not releasing in 2024. So Doke V is pretty much up in the air whether or not it's releasing this year, but we wanted to mention it that it's still out there. They're still working on it. Next over at number 14, we have Path of Exile 2. This is set many years after the first Path of Exile game, and if you played that, you know that Path of Exile 2 is probably gonna be pretty awesome. If you're looking for like a top-down action RPG to play with a bunch of people online, or maybe just like a friend, this is like a whole new campaign uh, with 12 character classes, like a bunch of ways to build out a character. Because within those character classes, like they all branch out and there's like up to 36 uh, different ways you can go. So hopefully there's a lot of depth here. That's what they're flexing on the most here. And we're excited to see a multiplayer game like this again. Uh, it is free to play, so you never know what kind of trappings are gonna come with that, but they have confirmed that like expansions and updates and stuff are going to be free and that the game is not pay to win. So we'll judge it, of course, when it fully releases, hopefully this year, maybe in early access. We don't know for sure yet, but yeah, keep it on your radar. Next over at number 13, we have Where Winds Meet. This is like an open world-ish action RPG. Uh, the publisher is NetEase, and this just looks awesome. It looks like you can build your own complete character from the ground up uh, and then have different stats and weapons you can use and go on this big adventure. We've seen mounts like horses in the open world. We've seen some pretty big over the top boss battles. Uh, thankfully, from Tokyo Game Show a couple of months back, uh, we've gotten like 20 minutes of gameplay online that you can check out. I highly recommend you checking it out. It looks like it's got lots of villages filled with quests and vendors and things to do. And I really want to see what the unique hook is for this one because it just looks cool on the surface. But I wonder what else it has. As of right now, it is slated for sometime in 2024. Next over at number 12, we have The Witcher Remake. Yes, CD Projekt Red has confirmed that they are working on a complete remake of the original Witcher game the one that probably has kind of aged the worst, still definitely has plenty of redeeming qualities, but CD Projekt Red is going back to the drawing board and remaking it because people can't get enough of The Witcher, obviously, clearly. This is one that we know has been in the works for a while. Uh, they confirmed it in 2022. Uh, we don't know how long it's going to take. We'd love to see more from it this year. I, I hope that we'll see something from it this year. We don't know if it'll release but if anything, weird tangent, I hope The Witcher 1 remake leads more people to go on and play The Witcher 2, uh, because The Witcher 2 is incredibly awesome. Next over at number 11, we have Arc 2. 2024 might be the year where we finally get the next entry in the absolutely massive survival game franchise. The original Ark is an absolute weird, crazy mess, and it is an absolute success. People were obsessed with it, and people have definitely been waiting for a while for this sequel that has Vin Diesel in it, and he's working on the game or something. The last we heard from the CEO of the development studio is that Ark 2 is still on track for a 2024 release uh, towards the end of 2024. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Next over at number 10, we have Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. This one is gonna be a big one. It's the next adventure in Ichiban's saga, the new lovable hero, but thankfully Kiryu is also involved. This time it looks like a crazy wacky adventure in a tropical vacation island, and I can't wait to see where this goes. These games are unique and special, and more specifically the newer Like a Dragon games because they have turn-based RPG combat. And along with that, like all these games, uh, there are tons of diversions and weird fun things to do to keep busy. If you're watching this video, like when it goes out, uh, this one is coming pretty soon. Uh, sentiment about it already seems pretty good. People are pretty excited about it. So yeah, personally, I hope this series goes on forever. Next over at number nine, we have Rise of the Ronin. This is the latest from Team Ninja, the people behind most recently, Neo and Neo 2. So this really shows that they understand the Souls-like action RPG genre and they're taking it to the next level with this one. I mean, look at this game. It's like a really cool concept. It's set in a more real world, it's war-torn 19th century Japan, and it is dubbed as an open world action RPG. Not only are you doing all the cool stuff, fighting challenging bosses, using cool weapons, uh, but it looks like you also have some gadgets and some interesting ways to traverse the environments. Team Ninja, this time around, it looks like they're really emphasizing story as well, which I'm really excited to see. If you were into something like Ghost of Tsushima and you're like waiting for something like that that'll give you that same hit, I'd say keep an eye on this one. It's definitely gonna have way more RPG elements than something like Ghost of Tsushima, but it's looking to be pretty awesome. 
Next over at number eight, we have Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. We've been waiting for this one for a long time. The massive follow-up to the original PC RPG classic. Uh, it's a game about vampires. I'm very simple. I always just want more vampire games. The original was awesome and very unique and genre defining for the time. So I'm really hoping this new one can live up to that, uh, the, the bloodline, the pedigree, you know, because being able to live as a vampire in this world in first person and go around and do missions and kind of have some immersive sim elements and make your own decisions looks really impressive. We've only gotten glimpses of the game. It's had a really long development cycle. Things have changed up significantly, but as of right now, the expected year is this year, 2024 at some point, probably towards the later half, but we hope we finally see it. Next over at number seven, we have Avowed. This is Xbox's big tentpole RPG from Obsidian, the makers of the incredible RPGs. They know what they're doing with everything from like the Outer Worlds to Fallout New Vegas. They clearly understand those specific types of RPGs, uh, and now they're really running with it. Avowed technically takes place in the Pillars of Eternity world, but like it does look like it's its own new exciting thing that you can jump into if you like something like Skyrim or Elder Scrolls. We are really excited to see more of this thing. Xbox and Obsidian City and have been showing it off little by little, and it does seem like exactly what people are hoping for. We hope it can live up to those expectations, and we hope we see it in 2024. Next over at number six, we have Black Myth Wukong. This is another Souls-like. I know this list has a lot of them, but it's technically an RPG subgenre, uh, and this is the one we've had our eye on the longest. Uh, this is based on the classical 16th century Chinese novel Journey to the West, so it's got some good lore, it's got some good story to it, and some really unique elements from uh, both the main character uh, to the environments and the bosses. This just seems like some incredible fantasy. Uh, we're really excited to see how the RPG elements work out. We've seen some different weapons uh, and it looks like character costumes and loot and stuff, but it just looks awesome. Visually, boss battles, the challenge, everything seems like what Souls fans have been asking for. And if unless it gets delayed again, we get to check it out this summer, August 20th, 2024. Next over at number five, we mentioned Avowed from Xbox, but they also still have Fable in the works. This new Fable revival has been in the makings for a long time and as a big Fable fan, I'm really excited to see what the deal is here because we got a trailer like a year or so ago that revealed a little bit more about the game, but frankly, I still don't know anything about it. This could be literally anything. I'm not saying it looks bad yet or it looks good, it's just a thing. But again, I love the Fable franchise so much and the developers working on it, I think are a good choice. So we're excited to see where this goes. We think this year we'll see more of it, like what the game actually is. We don't know if it'll release this year, it could. So that's why we're putting it on this list. But yeah, while I'm here, just if you've never played the original Fable, check it out. Next over at number four, if we're sticking to ones that don't have a date, it's Dragon Age Dreadwolf. This is a big one. We've been talking about this one for a long time. People are starving for the next Dragon Age game. They could really do anything with it. And we've seen very little of this, but people are still chomping at the bit for it. We know that Bioware has been working on it for years and years, uh, and the pressure is on, to be completely frank. Will we see it this year? I don't know for sure, but again, it has been in the works for a long time. I do think this year we will see a substantial amount of it because it's been a long time coming. Bioware has gone through a lot of changes. Some people argue that it's not the Bioware it used to be, but this is their opportunity to really blow people away. So we hope they do. Now, next over at number three, we have Persona 3 Reload. This is a massive RPG. All the Persona games are, and three is beloved, but Persona 3 Reload is a remake uh, that brings a lot more to the game. At least that's what it seems like. It hasn't released at the time of making this video, but it seems like it's a substantial overhaul of a lot of things uh, and just a good update on a classic beloved JRPG. People have been waiting for this one for a while, and what's nice is that they're putting it on all the major platforms Platform so anybody can access it when it releases February 2nd. Now, down at number two, you guessed it, it's one of the biggest RPGs of all time, 
the Final Fantasy series. This time around with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is the follow-up to Final Fantasy VII Remake, which of course retold the beloved Final Fantasy VII classic uh, from the PS1 days while shaking some things up. Now, the game has been split into multiple parts with Rebirth being the next part, and this is where I think things are gonna get really interesting. This is where, in my opinion, you'll probably get to see some of the cooler elements of the original Final Fantasy VII, and the potential is there to really blow people away. Now, the current release is February 20. 29th, 2024. Now, down at number one, Capcom has answered some fans' prayers with Dragon's Dogma 2. This looks like a big old RPG and a real good return to form. I respect this because it looks a lot like the original game. It doesn't look like they've rewritten and or like went back to the drawing board completely. They're giving fans more of what they want. The original Dragon's Dogma was just a tight, fun, well-made RPG with good fantasy elements, cool boss battles, great story, and it seems like they're just doing more of that. What more can you ask for? The original Dragon's Dogma is easily accessible on all the major platforms, and we recommend checking that out before this because you'll understand why people are really excited for this one. And it releases March 22nd, 2024. Those are the games, of course, but we got a couple of bonus ones we wanted to squeeze in. Greedfall 2, The Dying World, is slated for 2024, and that could be an interesting one. We actually really like the original Greedfall, flaws and all. Also, Pal World. This is releasing in early access soon, and it's like a multiplayer or single player open world adventure Pokemon with guns. Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> also, Dragon Quest XII, The Flames of Fate. We don't know a date for this one yet specifically, but more Dragon Quest is always good. But like we said, those are 20 or so RPGs releasing in 2024 and beyond. Let us know what you're looking forward to in the comments. And if this video helped you out, maybe a new game is on your radar or you just like talking games with us every day, clicking the like button helps us out. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.